In any classroom, up to 10% of the pupils can be defined as gifted and talented. Talented is used to describe having advanced skills or aptitudes in the performing or visual arts, or in sport or PE. Gifted describes having great ability or potential in academic subjects, and it can be difficult to meet the needs of these pupils in the classroom. This is Selwyn Primary School in East London, and here, gifted and talented teaching is well developed. In this program, we'll look at some of the gifted and talented teaching strategies used in the school in a typical day. This is one of the reception classes, and for some of the time, the teacher brings her gifted and talented pupils together for some reading. Let's check, because we know lots of letters. Let's see if we can look on the page for the word that says drink. What letter does drink? What's the thinking behind bringing this group of pupils together? In reception, we don't work in ability groups very much, but guided reading is something that I do. So this group of children, it's their second term in school. They all started in September together, and um, they were quite quickly identified as a group who work well together and could push on at a faster pace. Let's look at all the words. I put my son on into my bed. Brilliant. In two. Uh, I mean, reading doesn't start uh, when you begin to decode words. Uh, it starts when you begin to enjoy stories, talk about stories, make stories from pictures. These children can all do that very well. I put. And by keeping the ability group together, they move each other on. Put. My. On to the Year 2 classroom. During this session, the class teacher is working for a while with her gifted and talented group to discuss a book illustration they haven't seen before. Can you tell me what you think is happening in this picture? People are hiding under the table. Why are they hiding under the table? Myra, who are they hiding from? From the king. From the king. What is the king going to do to them? So he could control them. So he could control them. So what happened before this to make all these people go under the table? Myra. That that man in that the king inviting all those people so he could kill them. He invited them for dinner so he could kill them. What do you think is going to happen in the next picture? What is going to be happening at the end of the story? And get the net and put them all, the people in the net, and then you can put them in a cave. Does anybody have any other ideas? Myra? I will get them and kill them with a knife and put them, put, and, and just put them in the house and put them in the garage and close the door and lock it forever. It's a very dramatic ending. What do you think will happen to this man? Uh, he, will he get caught? He's going to run away. In what way is this work different from what the rest of the class can do? For other children to think what's happening before a story without the picture and what's happening after without the picture is very difficult. For these children, it really makes their brain work. They've got no picture to go from. They have to form that picture in their head of what is actually happening beforehand and what is happening after. So you can see that these children have really worked on thinking what could be the, the variations. And they're not daunted by the fact that that must be right because somebody else said it. Whereas the other children would have gone, oh, that must be the answer. These don't think that way. They need to be um, extended in the fact that they can think there are a number of different ways a story could end.
do some more doubling. Ready? Double eight. Show me. This is a year 16, three numeracy 16, session. 16, double ten. Show me. 20, double ten is 20 digits. Double six. Here, the gifted and Double talented pupils, six. like Daniel, are working with the whole class. Good boy. Show me. But they'll 12. get more Double challenging six. questions. Double thirty-eight. And their answers can Show be me. used to help the rest of the class. Well done. Who can explain what they did? What did they? What did you do, Daniel? I doubled thirty. Yep, you doubled thirty. Then I doubled eight. Mhm. Mm and. Double 30 made 16, and double 8 made 16, so I put the, I put the 10 to double 30, mm -hmm. then I added another 6. Right, well done. So he did 60 plus 10 plus 6 to come up with his answer. Okay, well done everyone. This is a problem. When the class breaks into groups, the teacher sets an open-ended problem for her gifted and talented pupils to work on together. How many children would have had school dinner, packed lunch or home dinner so far this year? Okay, this year. At the end of the lesson today, I'm not expecting a number here as an answer. It's not that kind of problem. This is a, a, my gifted and talented numeracy group. We've been doing one-step problem solving which they can all do. I've set them an open-ended problem, um, which they don't need to answer, they need to decide how they're going to solve it. Hopefully they've come up with a range of ideas, of possibilities to set off around the school to find out the answer to this. And possibly tomorrow, they can set up their ideas and off they can go. And what ideas did the group come up with? You could count how many people is in one class and you could count how many people are in the other class. You could ask everyone in the school and, um, and say what, um, what they have for lunch. Uh, we can go to the staff room and ask people what dinner, in the look in the register, what dinner are they going to have. Three different approaches to solving the same problem. Year five, and the class teacher is spending time with his gifted and talented pupils to analyze data from their local traffic survey. First, he checks what they already know about bar charts. Can anybody tell me what that graph, that bar chart, is telling us? What information's on that? It's telling us what vehicles were, how many vehicles were at the each kind of stop. Perfect. Then okay. he presses them to analyze the data on. further. Puja. Buses, where did we see the most buses? The market. Market. Well, why do you think they were at the market? Why did we see most buses at the market? Mm. Is the bus stop there? Because there's a bus stop opposite the, the marketplace. Where was the most vans? Um, at the market. Why do you think there might be more vans at the market, please, Lovna? In the market, they, might, they have to make deliveries. It's a good girl. I wouldn't expect this type of information to be drawn out that easily from normal Year 5 students. Uh, the G&T group that we're dealing with today do have good reasoning skills and power to extract information and make inferences from information. And that's why um, the G&T group moves on to this type of work. Year 6 science about how bulbs grow. I just want to show you this bulb here. Okay, let's give it a little tug. So but with a more challenging what if question for the gifted and talented group to think about. And you notice that the shoot isn't growing straight, is it? Yeah? The shoot has actually grown up and round. And if you imagine we had planted it upside down by mistake, what do you think will happen to the shoot? It'll die. It planted it upside down. It'll die. Because? Because it's not going to be able to grow properly. Then have a go at this, Jessica. Um, go. Would it die because, um, because um, like the plant will need the light because it's already started getting mm. leaves and a bud. Okay. Florian, do you want to say something? And the roots won't be able to anchor the plant mm. to the soil. 
Okay. I think it would grow you, but Ooh. it will die after because the the roots are still getting water from yeah. the rain. Um, the shoot will still grow you, mm -hmm. but it will go um down and it will turn and come back up for the search of the light. Absolutely right. Well done. The shoot has actually grown up and round, and if you imagine. Another year six, and a whole class discussion about the pros and cons of playing in the street. We are basically we're looking at a problem, of and trying to solve solve this problem by using parallel thinking, taking apart the problem, looking at all the different aspects of that problem. The children that are wearing the hats at the moment are our GNT children who are basically trying to facilitate the discussion within the group and work with the group to try and get them to get the most out of them as possible. We've got the creative thinkers thinking of new ideas. We have just the facts table over there coming up with all the different facts on that are involved. When children play on the streets they can break windows or they can break something. We have our emotions table over here, thinking of the different feelings that are involved with children playing within the streets. Yeah, we feel unsafe because we could get run over. I feel happy. Yeah. And over here we have our positive thinkers, looking at, I mean, there are definitely some positives to be to playing in the streets. Um, you can become more independent. Yeah, become more independent. Don't. Oh. Independent. I can't spell that. I know you can't. Right, next one, next one. And of course the negative side over here in the black hat. They all will get lost and they'll start complaining. I know. So they could get bullied because they don't have a garden to play in and they have to play outside on the street. In a minute we shall all come together, have a look at what we've found and see if we can make a solution, a decision to what we would like to do. Drivers become aggressive when children get in their way. Children cause property damage. Drivers suffer from road rage. Kids could get injured. Children in danger of being bullied by other kids. Build more parks for children to play in so they don't play on the streets. Leave parks open for later hours. We feel worried because we could cause danger to other people. And we feel happy because we're playing with our friends in our local environment. And we also feel upset because we don't have our own private space to play in, and we, um, but with our friends. So in this program, we looked at whole class teaching with challenging questions for gifted and talented pupils, moving ahead with a group of reception readers, extending pupils thinking by discussing alternative story endings, challenging gifted and talented pupils with open-ended problems, developing their analytical and reasoning skills in data handling, encouraging the gifted and talented to make scientific predictions, and using gifted and talented pupils in mixed groups as facilitators and lead learners.